What color is the first man that says he was taken from the ground? That's a black man. That was the color of Adam. Now, today, you get our people to say, oh, but wait, color don't matter. Is that true? Ma'am, is that true? Is it true that color doesn't matter? Oh, now she don't want to talk to us. Now she don't want to talk to us. We're not here to show hatred in any way, but we're here to teach you because the white man done lied to you, sister. That's what the white man did. So I need you to get your head out the white man's butt. That's what I need you to do. And learn to respect your black brothers. That's what you got. What's your nationality, man? What's your nationality? Are you Haitian? Are you Jamaican? Are you Chinese? What's your nationality? Say again. You see, wait, where? Africa. Af oh, Senegal? Nigeria. Nigeria. Okay. In Nigeria, there's a big problem in Nigeria. Guess what it is? The black woman in Nigeria loves to bleach her skin. Right. Is that true? Bring it yes, out. that's true. You know why? Because the black woman in Nigeria hates herself. Right. And you know why? Because the white man taught you black woman to hate yourself. That's what it is. The white man taught you black woman to hate yourselves. Now, watch this. Give me Ezekiel chapter 16. What, what, is she, what, is, what did she say, brother? What did she say? What did she say? They do want to be white. But guess what? You, did, you told us Jesus is white. Did I have it wrong? Did you say that? What color is Jesus, sis? Bring it out. What color is Messiah? What color is he? Oh, she don't want to say. She don't want to say. Look, watch this. Let me show you something. Give me the Bronx Zoo. I love that one. Give me the Bronx Zoo. Okay. Watch this. I'm going to show y'all something. Get Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 32. Atrocities, that's good. Atrocities, right? Oh, this is it. It's right here. Watch this. Everybody over here, right? Look, listen good. Look at this picture. Look at this picture. Okay, come over here. Come over here. Come over here. I want y'all to look at this picture. Sister. Sister, look. Look at this right here. This is called human zoos. Now you're from West Africa, right? right? Why she keep laughing? Says, I'm not laughing. What's so funny? Look, sir, we're trying to help you. Look, human zoos. Everybody here in Newark, y'all heard of the Bronx Zoo, right? Right? Y'all with me? You heard of the Bronx Zoo? Yeah, have you ever heard of the Bronx Zoo? Okay. Look. Right? Look, is it, is it, you don't got this one? Okay. Right here, this is another Negro village in France. It was called the World Fair, where, look, look at this. Nude or semi-nude black women and children were presented in cages. Black, Phineas, Phineas, tell her Creole, pay attention. Tell her, her, say, she's from St. Martin. Can you tell her, pay attention? Says, look, look. Look, this is black woman. Black woman. All this is black woman. This is what they did to y'all black woman. They had people come and look at you all, look, as if you were animals. This is history. And this was in the Bronx Zoo as well. Do I got that poster board? What do y'all look for over there? No, but look. it ain't over there. Okay. Look at this, this is a woman and child. You got Caucasians walking by looking at them as if they're animals in a display. Sis, you understand what I'm saying? Okay, this is a woman and child. Look, human zoos in France. Look at this. Now give me the other poster board. I'm gonna show you another one. Now, I'm gonna 
offend a lot of y'all out here. But Muslims play a role in our slavery. Right. I'm here to tell you the truth. Right. That's right. It wasn't just the white man that destroyed black people. The Arabs played a role in our slavery. That's right. And guess what? How many of y'all see roots? How many of y'all see roots? What was Kuta Kinte's religion? He was a Muslim. The Arabs forced black people to convert to Islam. Right. Mecca was one of the largest slave ports. Look at this. The inspection and sale of a Negro. Look, the Arab Trans-Sahara slave trade. What are we showing you? That the Arabs and the Caucasians got together and sold black people. That's right. Which is why today, most black people are in primarily two religions. Christianity, or what's the other one? Islam. And I'm showing you the history on why that happened. Right. Give me Deuteronomy 2864. Deuteronomy 2864. Watch this. Listen to the scripture now. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. Bring it out. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. In the slave trade, will we take it among all people? Yes. How did you get to St. Martin? St. Martin with boats. How do we get to America with boats? How do we get to Jamaica with boats? Bring it out. From the what end of the earth? From the eastern hemisphere. Read. Even after the other. Even to the west. Read. And then thou shalt serve other gods. And he said, look, you're going to serve other gods. Gods foreign to your God. Because the God that black people serve was the one true God. Right. The Lord of heaven and earth, right. a black man. Right. But we were forced to serve God as a Caucasian man. Right. Read. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, Read. even wood and stone. So now look at this. Wood and stone. How many of y'all have seen a rosary bead before? Some of those rosary beads are made out of wood. Have you seen a wooden rosary bead before? Yes. That wood religion is Christianity. And the stone religion is Islam. How many of y'all heard of the Kaaba stone? How many of you heard of that before? Muslims have to make a Hajj. H-A-J-J. They have to make this where they march around the cobblestone about seven times and they give homage to the cobblestone. That's called idolatry. That's idolatry. That's what that is. Now, I'm going to ask y'all a question. I'm going to ask y'all a question. When we were in slavery in the 16 and 1700s, did they have yokes up? Yes. What's your question? If a man leaves you, can he marry again? Yes. I'm going to show you something. Give me Deuteronomy 28. Sorry, Matthew 19. Sorry, first. If you're married to this man and you guys divorce. Yes, but look, I'm going to show you the stipulation. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 13. Watch this. So her question is, if I, yeah, that's it. Her question is, if I'm married to a man and I divorce him, can I be married to somebody else? I said yes, but there's a stipulation. Look, 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 13. And the woman which hath a husband that believe not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. So the Paul says, when a woman marries a man, and what? Read that part again. And he she he be pleased with drugs. You read it again for the top. And the woman which had a husband, that the woman that's married to a husband, right? That believeth not, but the husband does not believe. The husband says, I believe Jesus Christ is Caucasian. I don't want to follow God's commandments. Watch this. And if he be pleased to dwell with her, 
But in this example, this man may say, you know what? I'm going to follow you. I'm going to stay with you and I'm going to change my life. I'm going to stop eating pork. I'm going to stop eating shrimp. I'm going to do what the Bible says because I love you and I want to keep this marriage together. Read on. Let her not leave him. The Bible says don't let you leave that man. Watch this. Now this has nothing to do with white man Jesus religion. This is talking about honoring God's true laws. That's right. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. The unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. Now watch this. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Because some men, guess what? Have unbelieving wives. And their wife will say, you know what? I'm going to follow you and I'm going to change my life. Because one of the laws in the Bible is that women are not allowed to wear pants. They're only supposed to wear dresses and skirts. Some men, when they follow God's truth, their wife says, I'm not going to do that. Some men's wives say, you know what? I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to change. That's what Paul was addressing in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Do you understand so far? So now watch this. No, 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 wait. Watch this. Read on. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. Why? Because what? Read on. But God hath called us to peace. Because God hath called us to peace. Now, right now in your brain, you're thinking about this guy. Go ahead, talk to me. The Bible does not advocate a woman to divorce her husband because of adultery. Yes. Give me Jeremiah 3 and 1. I'm going to show you something. But the Bible does advocate a man to leave his wife if she do have sex with another woman. If she has sex with another man. No, you don't understand what I just said. You don't understand what I just said. Listen good. Matthew 5 and 30. Matthew 5, give me Matthew 5 and 30. If a man has sex with another woman, the scripture does not say that she can just divorce him. But if a man is married to a woman, and she has sex with another man. The Bible says that man must leave her. That's right. It's not 50-50. God says when a woman has sex with somebody else, she's defiled. Bring it out. But if your husband has sex with somebody else, there's no scripture that says you can just leave him because of that. So it's not equal. Read this, Matthew 5 and 30. Matthew chapter 5 verse 31. It has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication. So the only reason a man can put away his wife, he's saying, except is for the cause of fornication. The woman has sex with somebody else. God said, wait, God says he has to leave. Has to, God said he has to leave. She defiled her body. Look, give me now. Wait, look, look, hold on. You're going too fast. Slow down. I need you to bring it down a notch. Watch this. Now go to Jeremiah 3 and 1. Watch this. Listen to this. Jeremiah 3 and 1. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 1. Bring it out. They say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man. Shall he return unto her again? So the question is, if a man is married to a woman and she go and become another man, shall not that land get spoiled? Verse 1, they say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him. So I'm married to a woman. I put her away. She go from me. Watch this and become another man. The woman who I was married to, she has sex with somebody else. 
shall he return unto her again? God, the question is, can I accept her back if she wants to return to me? What's the answer? You say it's okay. You hear the question? Very exactly. The question is, listen, the question is, I'm with a woman. We separate. She has sex with another man. Can I accept her back? Can I accept her back? You say yes. You say what? It's up to you. What do you say? What's the answer? Yes or no? Okay, you say up to you. Listen to what God says. Shall not that land be greatly polluted? That means she can you cannot take her back. Why? Because she's polluted. She had sex with another man. Y'all don't know God's laws. Y'all don't know God's laws. Read it again. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 1. God says, once that woman has sex with another man, you cannot take her back. Why? Because she's defiled. God says she's defiled. Come on. They say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man, shall he return unto her again? Some of y'all said it's up to him. God says no, he cannot take her back. Why? Because she had sex with another man. Once the woman you're married to has sex with another man, she's done. God says you cannot take her back. Y'all have to understand, sex is spiritual. When a woman steps outside that marriage, she defiles herself with another man. She will never be the same. She will never be the same. That's what God says. Yes. Yes. You understand? He can. He can remarry to another woman. The same one. Right. Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. You see, he said, so he said, what about the sister? She can't repent? She cannot repent. You know why? She's defiled. You understand? She's defiled. That sister now, let me say something. I want to explain. That sister, she may be able to change her life. You know what? I messed up. But guess what? She cannot return back to that man. He has to move on. He has to move on. Do you understand? I'm going to explain again because I know some of y'all might not understand. If a man and woman is married and that woman steps outside of that man, the marriage, has sex with another man or a woman, he cannot take her back. The sin she committed between her and him is unforgivable. Let's read the scripture on that. Read it, read it now. Man. Yeah. So here's, here it is. According to Jeremiah 3 and 1 in Matthew 19, if a man and woman is married, listen good sister, if a man and woman is married and that woman steps outside the marriage, he cannot take her back. Whether she slept with a man or a woman, God says that land is polluted. That's right. The Old Testament said that, and Jesus Christ said it. Now I'm gonna read it in the New Testament, Matthew 19 and 5. Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another committed adultery. So he says, the only reason you can put away your wife is for what? Fornication. All right? Fornication. But when you read 1 Corinthians 7, Paul explains other additional reasons why you can put her away. You understand? So when you really, look, when you really learn the true essence of marriage in Matthew 19 and 1 Corinthians 7, that's where you get to understand it. In Christianity, they do not teach marriage. Right. Give me an answer. Give me an answer. Give me an answer. Can the husband marry another woman? 
Yes. You know why? Because Matthew 19 and Jeremiah 3, guess what? They do not say he cannot. Now give me 1 Corinthians 7. Watch this. Look. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 14. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. Let them depart. They're not under bondage in such cases. Now look, listen, listen. I know you probably got a whole lot of issues going on in your life. But look, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing it out there. But look, no, no, that's, and that's good. That's good. It's fine. That's good. This is what I want you to understand. You have to come and learn the true understanding of marriage and how to keep God's commandments. Because you don't know. The way you learn marriage in the church and Christianity is wrong. Guess what? In ch- hey, look, look, let me tell you something. In church, there are prostitutes that go to church. There are lesbians that go to church. Look, listen. And look, listen. You've been asking 45 questions. I need you to listen. There are homosexuals that go to church. But look, they're not learning how to repent. They're not learning how to repent. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. This is the issue. Churches will accept everybody. They say, come as you are. But they don't teach these people how to change. Drug dealers take drug money and give it as a donation to the church. And the pastors know it. And they don't even show them how to repent. Think about it. All these churches in Newark and crime is so high. You know why? Because these churches are not teaching how to repent. It's all about money. Read this, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Come on. Be not deceived, neither fornicators. Fornicators will not get the kingdom of God. If you're in the midst of fornication, the message that Christ teaches is to repent before judgment comes. Read. Nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Now, look at that word, right? It said effeminate. Think about it. Effeminate. This man may not be sexually active with another man, but look at his ways. Look at his speech. Look at how he walks. God says an effeminate man will not get the kingdom. Read it again. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicate, nor idolatry, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. All right? So what we're going over is the message of repentance. We're going over for our people to keep God's commandments. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.